While it may be strange to have an episode dedicated to the easiest season in the game, there is some significance to this. One of the most concerning things I've heard is, when I get to winter, I die. Well, chances are, that problem stems from inefficient time management in autumn. This episode will focus on time management and guidelines for autumn survival, especially as your first season while preparing for winter. On default settings, there is a chance to get autumn as your starting season. Autumn is a season with little to no rain. Days are long, and dusk and night are short, so you have a lot of freedom. Like every other season, Autumn has indicators to tell the player that you're currently on this season. However, they're not as blatantly obvious as the other seasons. The indicators are based on a process of elimination. Is the screen slightly tinted green? Are rabbit holes collapsed? Are beefalo in heat? These are the indicators for spring, the other season that you may start with on default settings. So if the answer to any of these is no, then it's autumn. The one thing you can confirm is if birch nut trees are different colors. If they are, then it's autumn. These are some general survival tips, but it's relevant to autumn survival because of how easy it is to get complacent during this season. Always keep moving. As you're exploring the edges, try not to stray too far away from it. Usually gathering things along your path along the edge will suffice. Try moving as much as possible, even at nighttime. Your options are to flicker and deplete your sanity, or burn down trees as you go to create some charcoal for later. If you're too scared of those options, you can camp out at night, but make sure you drop the campfire near a bunch of resources you can gather. That way, you'll use your nighttime efficiently by gathering nearby resources and cooking food, instead of just sitting around doing nothing. Autumn requires you to have good hunting and gathering skills. You'll want to gather as much as you can, as efficiently as you can, and pace yourself correctly. Here are some things to keep in mind. Gathering grass and twigs is essential. However, gathering too much can waste time. A comfortable amount of each resource is between 10 to 15 of them. Throughout the entirety of autumn, you'll usually need no more than 20 to 30 of each depending on how active you are. By only carrying the minimum amount necessary for survival, you can spend more time gathering other resources and exploring instead. If you still need grass and twigs, when you find the desert biome, tumbleweeds can be opened up for up to 3 grass or twigs, which is a lot less time consuming than gathering from grass tufts and saplings individually. Logs are essential basic resources as well, but there are some important factors to keep in mind when farming them. Trees can be freely farmed until day 3. After day 3, there's a chance of a tree guard spawning from nearby trees whenever you cut one down. This chance grows as you survive longer, and along with it, the amount of tree guards that spawn can increase as well. While tree guards can be easily kited or pacified by planting pine cones near them, it's better for new players to avoid them altogether, as a large tree guard could kill some characters in two hits from full HP. The reason why it's important to state this is because in the first three days, when trees can be freely farmed, they're of higher priority in terms of time allocation. Evergreen trees are the most abundant, they cover most forests, and are sometimes in other biomes too. They drop logs and pine cones when chopped down. The pine cones can be planted to grow another evergreen tree, or you can use them to pacify tree guards if they spawn by showing them that you care about nature. Lumpy trees are similar to evergreens, but they don't drop pine cones. This means that if you get a tree guard, you won't have a way to pacify it if you only chop down lumpy trees. Birch nut trees are similar to evergreens as well, but they drop birch nuts instead of pine cones. Note that only a large, fully grown birch nut tree can drop birch nuts. These can be identified by their fluffy appearance. Food is available in abundant amounts in autumn. For most characters, hunger depletes at 75 per day. Most food you pick off the ground like berries and carrots will restore about 10 hunger. So the meager amounts of food you collect by randomly picking stuff up is usually enough to sustain you. Birch nuts are a great source of food in autumn. When cutting down a large birch nut tree, they will always yield two birch nuts this season. This means that while you're gathering logs for essential items, you're also gathering food at the same time, making birch nut trees one of the most efficient resources in the game. Although birch nuts cannot be eaten raw, they take a very long time to spoil, so you'll be able to cook them over a fire and eat them whenever you please. Birch nut trees are sometimes found in the grassland biome and found in abundant amounts in the deciduous forest biome. 
Cactus flesh is a really powerful source of food that is found in the desert biome. I often refer to it as jerky you pick off the ground. Just make sure you cook it before you eat it. Their primary function is to restore sanity, but they're a decent source of hunger as well. Picking a cactus will cause you to take damage, but the various food items you pick off the ground often restore health as well, especially when you cook them, so this damage can easily be healed off. The koalafint is one of the best sources of food in the game, and should always be an option if you're having trouble with hunger. For more information about the koalafint, refer back to episode 8 of the tutorial series. This item is called a trap because it's trapping you into wasting time and resources for weak items. Avoid using them. There's a time and place to use traps as an optional survival item, but the early game is not the time. In terms of structures, farms are one of the least efficient sources of food in the game. They take too much time and usually yield weak items. Additionally, once winter comes around, the farms become useless, making them a poor investment that shouldn't even be considered until you have a sustainable base. Instead, focus on crockpots and drying racks. The charcoal that you get from burning down trees as a light source at night can go towards this investment. A base should always have several of these structures, usually at least two to three times the number of drying racks as crockpots. The crockpot will become your monster meat dump, and the drying rack for regular meat. For more information about the crockpot and its recipes, you can refer to the wiki. There are so many recipes to keep track of. Drying racks can be a way to refresh spoiling meat and provides you with long-term health and sanity restoring items in jerky and small jerky. If for some reason the jerky goes unused, you can always use it in a crockpot recipe as meat items, so they can be cycled very efficiently. Avoid making monster jerky. Fuel may seem like an afterthought for many new players, but it's important to have a source of fuel available at all times. The primary sources of fuel in the game are manure and beefalo wool. Beefalo wool must be shaved at nighttime with a razor when the beefalo are asleep and are not in heat. Manure can be found scattered near beefalo and from pigs when you feed them vegetables. Another source of fuel is turf. Turf is obtained by using the pitchfork on the ground, and of these fuel resources is the only one that is not renewable. Regardless, turf can be used as fuel as well. These are the only fuel items you should be using in the early game. Avoid using logs, twigs, and grass for fuel. Stockpiling fuel is a good way to stay warm and sustain yourself in winter. Late autumn, around days 15 to 20, is very crucial. The edges of your entire world should have been revealed already, and you should begin settling down in your base and preparing for winter. Double check your resource items, making sure you have a lot of every resource. Grass and twigs take 3 to 4 days to grow back. So if you're in need of any of those, gather them around day 15 or 16. This way you'll guarantee that they'll grow back by day 20, one day before winter begins and crops stop regrowing. The last two days of autumn should be used to double check your food items. Having freshly gathered food around this time, and preferably placed in an icebox, is a good way to guarantee your survival. Additionally, doing one final sweep of large birch nut trees is a great way to hoard a lot of birch nuts for winter, since the double drop rate of birch nuts in autumn will still be in effect. Finally, make sure you have your winter items. Ideally, you'll want to have a beefalo hat before winter starts. The beefalo hat provides you with the highest level of warmth for the head slot. However, if you're not comfortable with fighting beefalo, or if you weren't fortunate enough to receive a horn, you can shave them when they're asleep for beefalo wool. The beefalo wool can be used to make a winter hat. The winter hat provides tier 2 insulation, as opposed to the beefalo hat's tier 3 insulation, although the winter hat does have some sanity regen on it. Rabbit earmuffs should never be considered. Having at least one thermal stone is important for winter. A fully heated up stone can store heat and delay freezing. Combined with the beefalo hat and other insulation items, you'll be able to move around in winter with little issue. Be prepared. Time management and preparation are extremely important skills to understand in order to survive and don't starve. Mastering the fundamentals, the basics, of the early game can help you survive longer and become a stronger and more consistent player. Remember, it's okay to die. Just take it as a learning experience and learn from your mistakes. Keep on working on these fundamentals and you'll triumph over the difficulties of the game in no time. Thanks for watching and don't starve.